Ja, jetzt right. dieses Ganze mit dem, mit dem, mit dem Care. So care then. Ich habe gemerkt, ich wurde so ein bisschen... I notice, dabei, oder? I was a bit impatient und actually listening. So ein bisschen, uh, and at the same time, das Sorgen, das ist doch so etwas I felt calm in a way because I guess care is something that is good for the soul and it's not always the case that we consider care and construction within the same thought process. So is this about availability of surface area or I mean, is it not in everybody's interest? I would say it would make sense for everyone to build something where everyone feels comfortable. Yes, well, that's what we're going for, of course. But evidently, for me, it's a bit of a hybrid situation for me because I move between these two worlds. I'm in Germany, I'm professionally active there. But now I live in Switzerland and almost exclusively here. And you know, private property often stands between these collective concepts and projects that could emerge in collaboration with one another. And so perhaps politically, I, I am quite in favor of the way things work in Switzerland, to be fair. And, and this is why, for me, in the municipality where I live, I'm a little bit outside of Zurich, I have experienced a few times, I've done a few bits and bobs on the political level there, you know, in steering committees and whatnot, that people sell land and that say there is a viewing point that belongs to the local council where you can sit on a red bench and look out over the hills and it's wonderful if you're taking a granddaughter out for a walk or you know whatever whatever you're doing and it has been sold and now there's a there's a three-story single family dwelling so one family has been given the privilege of enjoying this view. And this is not something that is unique to that specific case. It happens time and again. But it would be so much better if we used ground and surface availability together for common purposes. I believe it would be so much better if we had, OK, a lot of land to sell, right? Oh, we can use it ourselves. But surely, if land belongs to the local community, the local community should be able to use it as well. I believe it is wrong to have this become so privatized. I believe it has become so commonplace to privatize land in such a way. But actually, when you think about it, it's just like the sun or air. It should belong to all of us. So if you have land considered property, then sure, there are, say, good landlords who don't just want to make buck, they want to uh, make the most of things, but it's not all about the money to them, perhaps, and you looking for landlords who aren't just trying to cram in as many uh, rent payers as possible, if you like. But of course, there are landlords who have better intentions, but wouldn't it be so much easier if I'm able to refer to municipalities as a collective, if I may? Surely, all of the perspectives that are to be incorporated here need to be weighed up against one another so a decision can be made as to how this land is to be used, where uh, planning permission should be granted, where it shouldn't, what should be incorporated from, rather than saying, this is my lot of land, these are the boundaries of my properties, and it doesn't concern me what happens beyond the boundaries of my little lot. Uh, but unfortunately, I believe this is what emerge, is emerging. I believe this also applies to what you were saying, does it not? Yes, I believe there are two sides to this. One is the availability of uh, building surface, if you like. Um, if I think about Kalkbreite and Zurich, this would not have been possible if the city of Zurich had not used this land in this way and presented the rights to it as it did. And so you have lots of land and, and yes you do have to think about land in lots when you're implementing a project but for me it's it's about considering the topic of providing 
pair, right? And in my presentation, you have the functional understanding of people's bodies. And I think that these topics are connected in that we need two sides of this story. We need a shift in how we deal with the topic of our bodies and how we're very much oriented towards an ideal body type. And if we go beyond that, then break free of that idealized notion and look at the activities that people pursue and how this could be organized as a whole and how this new organization can be put into practice, then that then becomes a new question and a new way to approach it. And that is how I would link the two. Thank you. Okay, so as I have understood from the term of view from you, Barbara, but also actually from your side, is that there is a certain level of support and also the question as to who is predestined to assume the role of the carer, pursue the role of the community-minded stakeholder to carry this forward. Well, yes. I, I, I believe uh, you know we are predestined for that, are we not? But even pension funds, etc., anybody who has any kind of stake in the property market, there may also be private landlords who, who say, well, actually, it would be nice if this became an intergenerational project here. And I believe that as many people as possible should try to tackle this issue in with whatever way they can. I think we have to look at as well how this is organized for the moment um, and asking, well, if you have construction, health insurance, the social infrastructure, this is all very sectorially split from one another and each of these kind of subsets has its own systems. And if this is to be reunited, we have to start to change the way the structures work. And in the Netherlands, for instance, there is this notion of, of having, I mean, they call it a foundation, but perhaps it could be an association or, or however you want to set that up. You have different sectors coming together for the good of the neighborhood to consider you know, housing associations, those who operate the uh, homes for the elderly, homes, and this is all redistributed according to people's needs. And then you address the topic of the body once again, and you have to find your path through, uh, through uh, a residential area like this. So you require a new combination of stakeholders, I feel. I feel the organizational structure has to change. Well, I agree that we have to work on the structures. We have to amend the structures. But surely then we have to amend people's mindsets. And how do we do that? You know, we heard Dr. Pericello talk about about this this morning, and, and it arises again and again. But there is uh, there's a political underpinnings to this kind of conversation. So that I saw on a slide earlier uh, mobility. You know, people living in, in different areas and increasingly living uh, living in different places too. I think in Switzerland this is quite commonplace that um, say single women or people living alone at the very least have a tendency to 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 move, perhaps move to smaller living spaces. And perhaps then that would free up space for families or, or, or even co-ops, you know. But I think this is something that you have to talk about and it's something that you have to want. So you need people who are going to say, oh, yeah, actually, we could do that. May I respond? I, I think you brought up this issue of care, and I think that this is ideal. It's an ideal way to broach it, is it not? In that you have John Tronto's positioning, for example, dealt with the topic of care and took it a notch further by saying, uh, well, at least this is the image that it conjured up for me, that you, you consider care, providing care, and, and see it more holistically rather than it just being this little functional thing, understanding how you can interpret the topic of care in a broad enough fashion for it to include environmental factors for, for the planet, the ecological questions that arise. 
Right. right, but I think this is what I was a little bit nervous about in the beginning and that care, you know, I associate that very rapidly with this hidden, very female work that happens behind the scene. It, it, it's charged with with illness and it has a bit of a negativity about it. Well, yes, and in our society, care is considered a female endeavor, I think. Care work, whether this be in the hospital environment or within a family, I, I guess the stereotypical approach there, that's something that we have to move away from, where we have to renew how we see this in this country. And we do see that something is happening there. Younger generations seem to see this in a slightly different way. But I see this in my children as well and members of younger generations. Actually, it's no easier for fathers than it was before really to have allowances made for them at the workplace. For example, if you know women have children and there is an expectation that an employer will accommodate that, but for men that's not so much the case. So there are always these distinctions, differentiations made because we've come accustomed to thinking about things in a certain way, but we do have to ask the questions and go beyond what we take for granted as, as women because these issues are just as relevant for men too. And so... It's not a coincidence, I don't think, that we have many female speakers here today. Evidently, these are going to be topics that women are interested in pursuing, but I'm delighted to see that we do have a great many men in the audience. It looks to me to be roughly 50-50, and this really is a topic that will be relevant for everyone because we all need to be able to rely on care provision at some point in our lives. And so... We need to share responsibility for that. Age, yes, uh, female, yes, but we need to consider this in conjunction with how the elderly live. This is to do with living sociology and the elderly, and this is something that I uh, learned about when, when I was pursuing this topic in particular. For me, you know, I chose a, a certain living setup, and a great many people that I'm friends with are women who live alone because, say, their husbands passed away or because they split up or for whatever other reasons that people make the choice to live alone. So you have to differentiate how you see people who live alone, how you see people, etc. I'm just thinking back now to what was said at the beginning by Mr. Klumpner, and I'm wondering whether this might be the counterpart to care in that actually this is about respect for people. But is respect not enough in, in this way? Would you like to say something? I feel like I've talked so much already. Well, I think you have care, right? I think here, literally, care in English is, is, is appropriate in terms of all of the connotations it carries and everything that goes hand on hand with being a little older too. And then using it as per a new definition, uh, for instance, as used by John Toronto, and address it that way. I think respect, well, respect for me lacks, lacks agency. This respect has to manifest in some way. What actions result from this respect? Well, yes, but I also think that this has a lot to do with, you know, what, what we take as a matter of course, because there are certain things that do not conform to standards, right? So a healthy... Well, yes, but I believe this is what we need to overcome, right? To have people who are as standard and people who aren't towards... I mean, I was hoping that, that that was what I had made clear in my presentation. I hope it was successful. But I think that's what we have to start to to pick apart, to have this respect for everybody. And I think that what you addressed uh, as well over the past three years, we've, we've seen this, just how vulnerable people are and that people in various generations are vulnerable in different ways. You know, there were encounters with younger people who were ill for, for a long time with this or you know, it's not just old frail bodies who are susceptible to this requiring support at this time. No, all human bodies are vulnerable in a way and perhaps we might require a different word to care to be able to express that but um, 
Shall we open this to the floor? Absolutely, for sure, we, we shall do that. Um, perhaps over the course of the, the afternoon when we have gained a few further insights and we have grown wiser from everyone's input. Anything from the audience, though, at this time? Please go ahead. It's got to be red. Yes, thank you. Well, I just had a question or a comment as regards everybody, irrespective of whom the land belongs to, being able, right? But I think if we change the perspective to to uh, see those who are able to take action here, I think there is a greater level of security if it is done within the framework of a cooperative, because in a cooperative, everybody who is there knows that they have long-term prospects of actually staying there because I think if it belongs to somebody else the the long-term notion is lacking a little bit because you know you might be uh, you might no longer be able to stay there your contract might be terminated and so for me for housing I, I think we have to be quite careful about how we consider this yes I believe there is a, a microphone somewhere there Perhaps somebody in the vicinity can help. I think you just have to press the button so that it's red. Ah, yeah, there we go. Well, what cooperatives do is exemplary. And it works with the cost of rental as well. A lot is invested into the outdoor spaces too, and this was nicely presented. I think for institutional spaces, this is a little different. For me, I notice on a daily basis at work or within my network that if you work in spatial planning and you consider investing more in outdoor spaces, you're always met with say from the financial side of things from uh, from those who are responsible for saying well how much is this going to cost who is going to pay for this because we're not going to be able to charge more on account of this there's always this profit thought going on that the, the thought process is just different so i think we need good architects who are able to incorporate seating areas and outdoor spaces and really provide encounter space right but considering costs because if they're looking to do this in a very cost effective way then you end up with concrete benches and they're just not inviting are they i mean these are the kinds of seating areas that you only sit on for like two minutes because they're too cold to sit on for any longer than that or without getting a bladder infection or whatever. So surely, say, wooden bunches would be nicer. And here I think the crucial point seems to be money again and again. Yeah, I, I think it's evident that this is my uh, my stance too. And I can't change this myself, but this is the economy, isn't it? What, what is, who is the economy for? What, what are we pursuing the economy for? If we're at home, in our apartments, this, this is not something that is outsourced to some factories or uh, somebody's workplace. This is an environment in which we are supposed to be able to live. And, and, you know, if you're in a pandemic situation and you see you know, over the course of the years the kinds of rubbish that is put on the real estate market or the plastic junk that people buy, there are so many products, there is, there's so much stuff that is produced that we just don't need and there are things that we don't have a need for and we actually don't need until somebody makes it and we think oh maybe we do whereas you know this is what i was trying to get at at the beginning the economy in general as a concept as a network looking to being able to preempt needs rather than looking to cover demand after the fact and looking to collaborate rather than compete and find profit in, in a good life rather than profit in, in monetary terms. This is what people want. This is what we want, but this is not how the world is designed. But there are truly scientists who 
are active in, within this network and who are attempting to work on this and attempting to create change in the world. But we need to have people who are willing to let this knowledge in. And so from my perspective, from the scientific research side of things, there seem to be little topics that are set by the wayside while mainstream deals with um, bigger issues like, say, GDP. I've just seen Christian Winger is here from an institutional investor. Now, I wonder what your stance is on all of this, but perhaps it would be time to ask those who are involved in, in, in housing, housing developers and construction to ask for your opinion. But thank you very much, first of all, to the ladies up at the front.